And talk to me about cake, cookie, pie. Fuck, chuck, or marry. <laughs> I think I would throw out the pie, fuck the cake, marry the cookies. Like, I like pie, but I don't like cooked fruit, so it's just kind of out for me. No one ever agrees with me on that. <laughs> My name is Georgia Woder. I am the executive pastry chef at Mel's and the restaurants at 85 10th. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make Italian rainbow cookies. These cookies are a traditional Italian American cookie. Typically it is a three layer cookie. It's kind of supposed to represent the flag of Italy. It's always gonna be three layers of an almond based cake with traditionally like a raspberry or an apricot jam in between. With my version, we're just doing straight up chocolate. Layers of cake with layers of chocolate and then chocolate on both sides of the top and the bottom. One of the things that I think distinguishes these rainbow cookies from other ones and kind of, in my opinion, makes them a little bit more appealing is that we make the almond paste from scratch. We're gonna take our almond flour, brown sugar, almond extract, vanilla extract, a little bit of salt for more flavor, and then honey. So the reason we're using honey is because typically in an almond paste you would use something like a high fructose corn syrup and I like to kind of steer clear of that. So to get a syrupy texture and kind of make it the texture that almond paste typically is, and is most used like, I like to use honey and it also just elevates the flavor a little bit. So I'm just kind of kneading it together by hands. So it's gonna be like a little bit crumbly. All right, so this is pretty much it for the almond paste. It's kind of mashed together into a nice thick paste. So now we're gonna make the cookies themselves. Uh, we already made our almond paste, so that can go right into the bowl. We're using a stand mixer with a paddle attachment so we can cream this mixture. So the almond paste, which has to be room temperature, goes in with the sugar as well as the butter, which again, room temperature. If you don't do that, you're just bound to get more clumps in there and it's not gonna aerate properly. So start your mixer on a lower speed. As it starts to combine a little bit more, you can bump it up to a medium high speed because you want to really incorporate that air. So the reason that we're spending this time to mix the butter and the sugar together is to help to aerate the dough. The sugar kind of acts as a stabilizer and the fat from the butter traps the sugar in air bubbles. And so that's what kind of helps it stand up. You'll see when we're done whipping this, it's going to be a much lighter color. So that's kind of one of the telltale signs that it's been fully creamed. And then while that's going, I'm going to separate the eggs. Then you can just put that in the other bowl. So with this, we're just making sure that every little piece gets incorporated. You'll kind of see some darker spots around the side. So that means you have to take a moment to scrape it down so that everything can just get fully combined. And back to speed. Now it's fully creamed, it's kind of ready to go for the next step of the process. So I'm gonna add the egg yolks and the almond extract. Scrape it down and I'm gonna stream in the milk as it's going on low speed. Now you can see that it's lighter in color, it's really fluffy and that is an indication that it is ready to go and you're ready to do the last step in this process which is add the dry ingredients. And then I'm gonna add the salt, the flour. Now this part you wanna be the most careful with because you really don't wanna overdevelop the gluten and you're gonna be mixing it more once you add the meringue anyway. I really only mix it until it's just combined. So the mixture like pulled away from the sides of the bowl, but you can still see some particles of dry ingredients in there, um, which is fine. But I don't wanna overmix it, so that's gonna be it for right now. I always lick the bowl. My mom always made brownies sugar cookies, chocolate chip cookies, but brownies especially uh, was always, my brother and I would uh, definitely go in on the, on the bowl. I mean, I still do. <laughs> we are going to be making a meringue. It's super simple. I'm gonna start off by just whisking the whites first. So I wanna kind of build a foundation of air bubbles. After that, we're gonna start to stream in the sugar. The sugar kind of helps seal in that foundation and it helps to stabilize it. So. Without the sugar, the meringue would deflate really quickly, but with the sugar, you'll see it get really shiny, you'll see it hold up. We're looking for soft peaks with this recipe. What that means is basically once you are done whisking it, when you hold up the whisk, it holds it, but it kind of flops over. All right, so it holds that peak a little bit. You can see I'm holding it up and it's like flopping, but it's staying there. It's not just dripping off. So it's almost holding and you can see right here, it's 
pulled up to a peak and then flopped over. And that's more of what we're looking for. So now we're at the last step of the process for this layer specifically. So this is just the neutral layer that's in the middle. And we've got the two layers of colors. One of them's gonna be red, one of them's gonna be green. But this one we're starting off with is just the plain one. So we're gonna do those after this. I have my cake batter in here that we mixed earlier. I'm going to add about a third of the meringue to it. This part is kind of like a sacrifice of all your hard work because you did all that work to aerate it and now it's like you're just mashing it into the cake. But you have to do that a little bit to like actually get it combined because these two textures are so different. And so this is why we don't need to incorporate the dries all the way because there is a lot more like folding and mixing that goes into it. So this is incorporating it right now. I'm just taking my spatula and I'm kind of cutting through the center and then folding over. So that's where the fold comes in. And as I'm doing that, I'm kind of taking a second to spread it out to make sure that nothing is clumping up in here. There aren't, aren't any like clumps of egg white. So I'm scraping around the bowl and over. And folding also is less disruptive to gluten. So it's not like you're like kneading a dough. It's not gonna develop the gluten a lot more. So you don't have to worry too much about that because you know after you like keep mixing and mixing once the dry ingredients are in, the worry is that it's gonna get tough because you're gonna over mix it. So we're gonna take a super flat, the flattest sheet tray you have. So these layers are like pretty thin. So what I like to do is to portion it out on the sheet tray so you don't have that far to move with it. So I'm gonna start spreading it out to the corners, even it out. So I've got it to cover the whole sheet tray now. I'm just making sure that it's nice and even. So now we're going to make the other two bases, and this one's going to go in the oven right now. All of them are going to bake for about 22 minutes at 300 degrees. So that one's in the oven, and now we're going to make the red and the green bases, and it's going to be the same method until we get to the meringue, and then we're going to add the food coloring in the meringue. This is the second go around of the meringue. This time we're going to be adding some red food coloring. We're not going to get it totally red because that is way too much food coloring, but we're going to get it like a nice bright pink. That seems to be kind of the traditional like Italian-American tri colore cookie. So right now with the meringue, I have whipped it almost to soft peaks, but it's still pretty gloopy. So at this point, I'm going to add the food coloring so that I can like try my best to gauge how much we should put in there. I would start with about seven drops or so just to see how far that gets you. And then you can always add more after. So this is a really nice pink, but because we're going to be folding it into the batter itself, it's going to get a little bit diluted in there. So we want to make it really bright, like kind of sting your eyes bright, neon. So once it's folded in, it's gonna look a little bit less crazy. Probably double the amount that I just did. So that's why we start adding the food coloring when the meringue isn't fully ready, because we're gonna keep mixing it to like see if it actually looks good. So this way we won't over mix it. We're about there, I think. So same method we used before, about a third of it. We're going to add into the batter and then start folding it. So this is the last meringue, last batch of the last cake, and I'm just gonna whip up this egg white with the sugar and add the green food coloring, and then we'll put that in the oven. So right now the cakes are cooling. We are going to start preparing the glaze, which is just melted chocolate, so that we can put it between the layers and top it off once the cakes are cool. And to melt the chocolate, if you have a microwave, you can do that, or if you wanna do a double boiler like this, just make sure your water isn't boiling. That's the main thing here, because if it, too much steam gets up around the chocolate and water gets into it, it's gonna seize up. And have a heat-proof bowl that you can put on top. This is a 70% chocolate. Now we have all of our cakes baked. They're cooled, we've got our chocolate melted. Um, so now it's time to assemble them. I have a cutting board right here that I'm going to build it on. And we're gonna start with the green layer first. Um, it doesn't matter which one you do first, the green or the red, it's just the plain one is gonna be in the center, so that's always gonna be second. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of chocolate between the layers. It's not gonna be too much. We just really want it to stick together. I have always had a huge sweet tooth, so I think I got into this like probably because I just like to eat the things that I make. But I always did a lot of baking and stuff growing up with my mom. And then when I was in high school, actually, I think we had this like vocational program at a school near, near mine. And my best friend was like, let's do the baking and pastry one. And I was like, I want to get out of school for half a day. So I just got into it that way. So I started doing that. It was like half a day. We would go to this other campus and just bake for like four or five hours. 
After I put the middle layer on, the taco can sometimes get a little bit hard, and so it's gonna not stick to the cake layers. So just to prevent that from happening, I take my sheet trays and press down just to kind of mash them together and make sure the chocolate really like seals both of them. And then fill our next layer. This is going to end up being the bottom of our cookies. Both sides of them are gonna get coated with chocolate. So we're just gonna do like a thinner layer on this side and it doesn't have to look super pretty because it's not gonna be the presentation side. So now that I've coated the bottom layer, we're gonna put it in the fridge just for a couple minutes so that it can harden up so that we can flip it over and then coat the top. So now this is all chilled, it's ready to be flipped over. I'm gonna take another cutting board and put it on top. And then carefully, being really careful not to smush it, just gently flip it over, down. And I've got our top layer. So we're gonna add just like a little bit more chocolate than we were doing on the other layers, just so that we can make it look a little nicer. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You just wanna get it to cover all the edges. If it hangs over the edge, that's also fine because you're gonna trim off the edges. So at this point, you can either just let it sit out at room temperature for a little bit or put it in the fridge for just a minute so that the chocolate on top will harden enough. Our cookie is now assembled. It is fully ready to go, ready to cut into little bite-sized pieces. I've got a knife that's gonna kind of cover the length of the side. So I've cut off all the sides. We've got all our scrap over here, which everyone can just snack on. Um, doesn't have to go to waste. Right now, I'm gonna show you how to cut it right into cookies. We're just gonna cut one strip, cut into, I would say like half an inch slices. So we've got our cookie right here. Nice little even layers. We've got even layers of chocolate in between and like a nice thick layer of chocolate on top. Hmm. Yeah, so what I love about these cookies is that compared to like a traditional tricolore cookie, it's a little bit more moist than your average. It's a little bit less sweet. And making your own almond paste helps elevate the flavor just a little bit more and you can control the flavor that you want a lot more, which is really nice. Something you can try at home, or if you want to come into Mel's and visit me, I can make that for you there.